All right, guys. What's up? Welcome back to Average Takes. It is the Bob and Shenny show today. We are bringing you, obviously, week 13 recap, NFL, all games. We're going to talk about all this shit, obviously, as always. And then week whatever, top whatever. Week 13, top 13. We were getting through this list, Trevor, before I play the music, and it's getting rough. Tell me about it. It's getting rough to get to these top 13 teams, but we're going to get all into it now. All right, guys. What's up? Welcome back to Average Takes. It is week 13 over with. We're transitioning into the week 14. We're going to give you a recap, our top 13 teams and all of it. I think we could work in both at the same time. So we're going to work in our top 13 to start off the show. Trevor, our lists haven't changed too much. It seems Maybe. Like in the last four or five weeks. No, no, my list hasn't changed. Except the team we had, obviously. Except the team we had. We had a new team or... You know, yeah, it's a new team each week, obviously, because we're adding on another one. But sometimes teams move out, move back in, up and down. And we're not the type of show, this is average shakes. We're not the type of show that's going to start you off at the bottom. We're feeding you the monster right off the get. I'm giving you my number one team. And it's a team I picked to win the division way early. It's a team that's been hot as couple fluke losses or something like that one maybe i'm going eagles eagles in the new number one spot they were my number one a couple weeks ago um they had a great game great performance versus the titans in this aj brown um revenge game we're big revenge game podcast trevor i don't know if all the fans really understand or get that but we love the revenge games. We love looking at those matchups. And this was one that A.J. Brown had circled. Um, he knew after getting traded from the Titans, he licked his chops when he saw that schedule and circled this week, week 13. He absolutely had a massive game. Eagles have a massive game. 35-10 to 10 win over the Titans, who are leading their division still. Um yeah, Eagles, great team. You know, it seemed like they're moving all pieces. Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown connection, unreal. That O-line still, I mean, Jason Kelsey, at his age, doing what he does day in and day out, Poland center, I love it. He bullied that guy. I love, love this Eagles team right now. I love the add-ons they went and made. You know, you're not happy with your run-stuffing defensive line. Well, let's go add an Adamic and Sue. <laughs> yeah but you know like what um trevor who do you have as your number one team well if you've been listening to the pod i've had the same number one for the last three weeks for sure this week i got a new number one and it's in the city of brotherly love the philadelphia eagles are my number one team they earned it 11 and one right now i like the way they're playing jalen hurts MVP trend right now. Can't guarantee it, but he's looking pretty fucking good. I'm pretty sure that. he is the leading in at like all sports books. He has like the worst, best odds, I guess, whatever, wherever you want to look at the line. I think it's like yeah. plus 150 for him to win MVP right now. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, 380 yards, and he, as you're saying, um, AJ Brown revenge game. I mean, everyone had to know AJ Brown was going to go off this game. Hertz was just forcing the ball. Felt like he was making play after play. Two tutties, eight catches, 119 yards. Pretty good day. And a little, little good gesture at the end. Little F you to the Titans, letting them know you had this and you, this is what, this is what I'm going to do. All you had to do was pay him. That's all you had to do. Like you yeah. said, eight receptions, 119 yards, two tutties. Um, you know, the Eagles did not run the ball very much, and it didn't seem like they were trying to. 
seemed like they knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to throw on this team. They wanted to put numbers up on this team, and they did. Devonta Smith had a huge game himself. Five catches, 102 yards, and a tutty. Like, both of them had great games. Jalen Hurts, great game. Um, the Titans, you know, they they didn't get anything done. Ten points. No. <laughs> and you have nothing to factor from it. I mean, Tannehill had 141 yards and a touchdown. Derrick Henry, he had 30 rushing yards. Oh, who had more? Ryan Tannehill had more. And Derrick Henry only had 11 carries. I mean, we talked about it. They have to do multiple things, and they didn't. They didn't get Robert Woods the ball at all. Traylon Burks, I know he got hit hard after his touchdown, but only one catch in the game. Awesome. Yeah. Three catches. I don't know who the Titans think they are. You can't. There's only one team in the NFL that could probably beat the Eagles when their tight end leads them in receptions and yards, and that's probably the Chiefs. There's no shot you can beat the Eagles when your tight end is leading you in reception and yards. Yes, I understand they were down early and they had to pass a lot, but Tannehill had 22 attempts. Derrick Henry had 11 rushing attempts. That's never – you You can't win that, that way. So, got to be better than that. Feed Derrick. This team looks very slow and lethargic with Derrick Henry not running the ball as well. Not a good sign. But but uh, it's a good sign knowing when he's on his A game, like the Titans look pretty fucking good. So, I don't know. Yeah, it was a game that they got beat at all facets of the game. And that's what makes the Eagles such a great team. I mean, their defense is great right now. So, all right, number two. You want to tell us? Number two, I got the next best team in the NFL, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. (laughs) Jumping all the way up to number two on my list. I don't care. That high, yes. Minnesota is for Either real. Make me look terrible or great. I don't know, but wow, Minnesota is a great team. But number two, that quick. So it happens. Are you looking lose. at? Are you looking at Reckies too much right now, Trevor? No, teams teams beat each other. Teams move. I hold a lot of weight to some L's when teams aren't that good and you lose them. You're gonna move down my list. All right, all right. Let's hear it. Give me it. Give me it. What else do I have to say? Justin Jefferson. That's it. Period. End of story. I guy need is, to come through bad for me, and he did at the end of the game. It was a guy huge, is a beast. I saw a bunch of videos of him versus Sauce Gardner. Excellent matchup. When I was looking forward to watching all week, and it was pretty much as advertised. You know, Sauce Gardner is pretty good. Jay Jettas, end of the game, had that tutty. And the Vikings come up with a W against Mike White and his fucking 5-0 and on the over Jets. Yeah, Shout great game. Um, well, I don't want to continue there because that is not my team. I'm going Chiefs. They were the number one last week and multiple weeks after uh, or before that. But they lose to the Bengals in a very close game, back and forth game. Um, Bengals just have their number. It's just one of those things. Bengals are three and over them in the last two years, including a big playoff game. Um, surprising to me, but I still think the Chiefs could beat anyone on any given fucking night. And I think Patrick Mahomes proves it every game. But this was a game that they got beat. Um and, you know, it was huge for Jamar Chase to be back. Um, and that helped the Bengals. But I'm not going to take too much away from the Chiefs. I still think they're a very powerful team. Um, that's why they're still sitting number two for me. Um, All right, Trevor. Well, let's... my number three was the Chiefs. All right. So we, can, so we can tail off that. Yep. I mean, piggyback mm-hmm. off that. Um. My number three is not who your number two is. Um, I'm going to continue with what it was, is the Bills. I still think this is a great team, and they have 
super weapons and I know they play tight games, but you beat up Bill Belichick in the Patriots at um Belichick's like house, the house Brady and Belichick built um in New England. You beat him 24-10 on Thursday, a prime time game. And I think the Bills are still a great team. They are going to go into a deep playoff run, I think. Um and I'm not going to take anything away from them. I think Josh Allen is a stud. He seems like he's getting over. Hopefully the red zone turnovers. Um, I definitely think they could have scored more. But I think the Bills are still a great team, man. I'm going to keep them three. I know, I know, I know Vikings fans that are going to hate me um, if they're out there listening to me right now. But, hey, this is my list. So, Yeah. Um... The Bills are my four team. I had them ranked one below. I agree with everything you just said, as in they're going to make a big playoff push. They're figuring out their run game right now, which is actually terrible for me because I have both Devin Singletary and James Cook in fantasy, and that is putting a blender in my brain of who to start. I'm starting, and- to, I'm starting to like James Cook a little bit more week in and week out. Um, since they made the move to um trade away uh Naheem Hines. Nah, no, they traded for Naheem Hines, but yeah, you're right. Zach Moss was Zach the Moss they traded. Um, uh, but that opened up Cook's role because they like Naheem Hines as a return man a, a, as a specialist in that um category. Um but yeah, now you said that was your four team, so now this is my turn for four team. Yeah. Um This is the Cowboys all day long for me. Um, Cowboys are a really good team, and we saw that Sunday night versus the Colts um, because the Colts have been a covering machine with Saturday. They've played well with him. Um, I know he had a timeout blunder uh, two weeks ago, and that's why they lost, but the Cowboys put up 54 fucking points. Yeah, they did. 54 to 19 beat the Colts. Um, and they just it was really all in the second half. Their defense, special teams, offense, they all came to play. Tony Pollard, these guys showed up. Like the Cowboys showed up. And then today I saw OBJ with uh Diggs and Parsons at the Mavs game. Yeah, you didn't hmm. see uh average takes report a couple weeks ago. Hmm. OBJ to the Cowboys. Hmm. That's I think that's what average takes tweeted out via Twitter. Via it's average takes smelling a little bit like Christmas. It is a perfect time for a Christmas present. Cowboys dropped a 50 burger in a score gummy game, and then the next day are hosting OBJ on a free agent visit. And this, I hope this was the perfect game to set up your day before you wanted to add on another superstar. I hope if Jerry really wants them, Jerry was in contact with Mark Cuban, letting him know, hey, let's take care of our guy, OBJ, at the Mavs game, all right? Everything in the kitchen sink. I want everything. The guy who does the fucking salt bay, that guy there. I want it all there. Jerry put in a phone call to a dear friend of his and said, Give it all to the buddy boy. <laughs> Front row. I want all the players dapping them up. I want a halftime show. I want the cheerleaders to kiss them on the cheek. Jerry Jones was pulling all the strings. Don't put him on an airplane, though. Don't put him on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, man, just buckle up. All right, OBJ? That's all you got to do. You don't got to act like you're sleeping, bro. Me knew. <laughs> You were that was a quick embarrassing moment for him. Like OBJ's had a lot of embarrassing moments from the the chick coming out saying she shit on his chest to get uh, booted k- off the airplane. Kicking the fucking kicking net. Yeah, punching the kicking net. Punching the kicking net and it ricocheting him back right in the mouth, punched him back. Like he's had some moments. And I mean he we all called him Mr. Drama Queen for a reason. I mean he was he was Antonio Brown before Antonio Brown went Antonio Brown, necessarily. Can you can you can you repeat that? No, the fans I hope get that. Uh, 
I hope they get that. I think I think it was he was Antonio Brown before Antonio Brown became Antonio Brown. And I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but he Antonio Brown yeah. took it to the Antonio Brown level. But if but if you're on the Antonio Brown level, how how do you get off the Antonio Brown level if you were already Antonio Brown? I mean, you get arrested and go to jail. <laughs> the, okay. the, that's where Antonio Brown's going. So, um, but yeah, the Cowboys OBJ. I think this is a perfect fit. We we talked about it weeks ago. We talked about it last season. I think when we were talking about where's OBJ going to go, the Cowboys seem like a great fit. They're the number four team on my list. 54 burger. Well, damn, are the Vikings five? Because Cowboys are my five. Vikings are five. All right. We can. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Vikings are good, but I don't trust Kirk Cousins in any time other than 10 a.m., 1 p.m. game. Dude, that's a myth. No. I, know, I know. I know you'll say stats don't lie. That's a fucking myth. Do stats lie? They no. can mis- They can misconceive you, yes. At that large of a number? Yes. No. <laughs> they misrepresent that whole trend. That's misrepresented 100%. But he has weapons around him that support him so well that make him in the Vikings the number five team. I They're a great team. They have played great. I picked them to be the winner of that division. I'm just going to – I'm going to brag about those two picks – all year long, because I, I, I mean, you guys probably could have rode with them. I don't remember. I don't remember if you were against them, but I absolutely love my Eagles and Vikings picks because they've just been so right. I've been a lot. I've been way wrong on a lot of picks. Besides this week in pickums, I do want to mention that I did have a pretty nice week. All right, let let's not forget. Your boy went 12, 2, and 1. And just wow. overtaken the entire pickups. Thank you. It, it's going to be hard. That tie, Trevor, you talked about the tie so much last season for the Steelers. I'm going to talk about the tie now. The tie might just save me the rest of the year. Unfucking real. Unfucking real that that happened because there's two losses and a tie. Woo. And I had three losses and a tie, and I was on the right side and Bob was on the wrong side. Because mm-hmm. if the Giants kicker made the fucking field goal at the end of the game, we're sitting equals. Yeah, it's we're, hard. we're equal parts here. But the Giants, the Giants blew that game. All right, let's just they had the lead. Commies came back. Commies should have won that game. No, no. <laughs> the Giants should have won that game. You just said that. You just said the Giants uh, should have won I, that game. I reverse jinx it. No, no. That was a no reverse jinx. That was just bad. Reverse time. Bad, bad game. Bad game by the Giants. It was a bad game, but there's no point talking about that game when we're talking about our number six team, Trevor. We are now, we're now right about at equal points. We've all our Top fives have aligned somehow in a w- weird way, but we've mixed and scrambled the top fives to match. Yep. So we're looking at number six. Well, is, my number this, six. This was the if, one of the hardest top ten for me was number six. Yeah, my I mean mine's mine is very fucked up. But I that is today news today. Whatever your team looks like today, that is what I'm ranking you at. My number six, and I I hate, I despise this pick at number six. I am, I hate that I ha- that they are so ranked high, that they are ranked so high on my list right now. I, I, it's it hurts me to say their name right now. The Bozo Bengals are number six on my Ooh, list. Oh, really? They jumped up big time. Like I was saying, you beat, they beat a team who I thought was going to stomp them and that gets respect in my book. So they're going to jump up a little bit. It's a little bit of I'm giving them way too much respect and credit because that's exactly what I'm doing is I'm giving them way too much respect and credit because they're not, they're not number six good yet. 
But when they start beating these teams that are better than them, then they, they're going to start jumping up and rising. But I really want to see this team fail, and I despise them. Um. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That surprises me because you've been on the Bozo Bengal bandwagon. I don't know if I could say that again either. Don't ask. But, wow. I like that pick. I'm going to go with you there. I like the Bengals at six. Um, They're a great team. They are in a great situation. I talked about it last week. They remind me so much of last year. Then they just overcome the Chiefs in a game where the whole world picked the Chiefs because the Bengals coming off injuries and all this nonsense. Chiefs have been on a roll. Bengals overcome them. Play. It seemed like they played better than right off the get. It, yes, but I have a bone to pick with that game because what fucking – I feel like the Chiefs never are scoreless in the fourth fucking quarter. They didn't score one point from – Three minutes in the third quarter to the rest of the game. That is very weird to me. Because they only lost by three. I'm like, they don't get a field goal, but I remember they missed a field goal. I think it was Butker, right? He's back. Yeah. Butker yeah. missed a field goal. Um, That sucks because the Chiefs are definitely not like that. And um. That's a huge prop to the Bengals' defense, man. To hold the Chiefs scoreless in the fourth quarter, that is unheard, unheard of. They missed the field goal, yeah, but usually Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes, and he gets it done. Travis Kelsey had a game where was not him. Like, he was not himself. It was not Travis Kelsey of regular um, at halftime, I don't think he had like any catches or any yards. He didn't. He didn't. It was his first half. I think he played in his career, or maybe it was this season that he didn't have a catch. Yeah, like it was. It was weird. The Bengals had a great game plan. They held the Chiefs. They stopped them in the fourth. The Bengals have the recipe. So teams need to read and learn that script. Whatever they did, watch that tape because the Bengals have the recipe. Three and zero in two years. That's something. That's a statement. Yeah. Everyone's called the Chiefs the big dogs for so goddamn long. Like, they're always notoriously the hardest team to beat. They're always in games. You never feel like they're out of it. Um, If I was a smart betting man, I probably would have bet the Chiefs like $2,000 just to fucking come back and win. But I'm not smart, and I'm not normal. Oh. And... Trust me, I went when I went through my head. I um, I thought about it too when the Bengals went up early. Um, but it was like fourteen three, and I was like licking my chops, knowing the Chiefs were going to come back. I was like, oh, seen this script many times before. But I'm going right. to hammer this. I mean, Bengals. Wow, great, great call right there. Um, I'm pissed about it. So. Six, we're both at Bengals. Seven is where it gets. Seven, I'm gonna su- I'm gonna surprise you. You're surprising me. Yeah, you're. Do you, you want me to go first? Sure, you can go first. I don't think you have the same team as me, but. Well, my seven teams: the Dolphins. I know they just lost. I know they just lost, but I'm calling that the fluke loss of the year, um, for the Dolphins. I know they played a great 49ers team, um, and I don't want to take anything away from the 49ers, absolutely anything away, because they had a huge fucking win with Mr. Irrelevant, which we'll get to in a minute. But I just feel like the Dolphins have a great team. They have a great coaching staff. They, I mean, not everyone wins every week. This was a crazy game for the 49ers. They lose a quarterback, and they still come back. Dolphins have no match for their defense. But I think the Dolphins are still a scary team in the playoffs. The offense is unreal. Um, but they showed they showed signs that <clears> – excuse me, that O-line being banged up, no Armstead, it showed that 49ers defense got in. But I'm going to still put the Dolphins there for now. I know someone's going to hate me out there. Um, but that's where we're at for now. Wow. Well, uh, my seven team, I said it was going to surprise you. 
apparently it was not as much of a surprise as I thought it was going to be because my seven team is the Miami Dolphins as well. Okay, so at least we're both equally going to get equal hate. <laughs> yes. Source. But, but the Dolphins are ahead of... Even though they lost their head because of the injury in the 49ers situation. But like you were saying, Cheetah, unstoppable most of the time, was again today. Or yesterday, sorry. The 49ers could not guard him. And Tua played like shit. And he still had a great day. That, it was that O-line, man. That O-line kind of fucked them all up. Um Yeah. But two and, of them said still had a good day. He threw two interceptions though, not great. They couldn't run the ball. Um, couldn't run the ball at all, and it pissed me off because that was their, that was my biggest thing for them, revenge game wise was their running backs are both San Francisco. They're gonna run all over them. No, Jeff yeah. Wilson three fucking yards. And the Waddle injury. Um, I'm pretty sure didn't he get hurt for a little bit? I don't know if he yeah got back. he got hurt. Um, but or something. that kind of sucked for them. Uh, but the 49ers, they had played a great game. <clears throat> Not taking anything away from the 49ers because they're right very next. They're sitting at number eight. Yep, same. I got them there um, at number eight. Um, they would be a fucking great game for them defensively. Outstanding performance all the way around. And then for Brock Purdy to come in, Mr. Fucking Irrelevant, last pick in the draft. A last pick in the draft, Mr. Irrelevant, has never thrown a pass in the NFL, Trevor, let alone a touchdown, let alone two touchdowns, let alone 210 yards and the fucking W, Trevor. Mr. Irrelevant got it done. Yeah, that is wild. This is saying they are keeping him as the starter, and I am ecstatic for this young man. Well, I don't know if you saw the other report, but... Apparently, Jimmy G's foot injury may not be as bad as they thought. Well, usually, sometimes that happens because you you get swollen and they can't really tell. They overjudge. Do you rather overjudge than underjudge? Um, they thought it was a Liz Frank, which that's like the the arch of your foot. I'm pretty sure. And uh, they said they it might be it might not be that. So if it's not that, then there is a chance he can return this year. If it is that then, yeah, obviously he's out for the year. That's not going to heal within time for playoffs or anything like that. I could definitely see him being playoff ready. I mean, there's still a lot of time. It's only a foot. Even if he's in a big cleat, big boot. <laughs> and I would love to see more teams do this where, oh, out for a year, and then boom, he's back for playoffs. Oops, I don't know how that happened. He just oh, no. superhuman. God. <laughs> yeah, he's a superhuman. But, you know, but I want to talk about Purdy. Because it was a pretty nice W. 33-17, to 17, that's how you put a statement. That's how you showed your quarterback. Defense is going to step up for you. I absolutely love what I'm pretty sure Fred Warner said after the game. He said he's been kind of lighting us up and playing very well versus the best defense in the league during practice. So we knew as soon as it was game time called upon him, we knew he could get it done. And he had a great game. I mean, he threw 37 times. Mr. Irrelevant. I will never get over that because it's something that has never been done. And the NFL has had a long list of. Are you players. saying Mr. Unlimited or Mr. Irrelevant? Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> Sounds like you're saying Mr. Unlimited. No, but I want this to be the new Mr. Unlimited because Mr. <laughs> Unlimited sucks. I don't know if you want to touch on that Ravens game no both teams oh, suck. yeah both broncos teams. are dead to me they've been dead the last three weeks they're gonna be they might be the 32nd ranked team at the end of the year they're t terrible and to think that i maybe have i may have known a guy that picked this team to win the afc west i'm, I'm and, flabbergasted and yeah i'm flabbergasted that that was even a thought in whoever's mind that could have been that is that is an like average take and then there's 50 feet of shit, and then there's where that take went. So, yeah. But but going that back, longs in the shredder. 
going back, <laughs> if the Dolphins had Jimmy G healthy today, they would be a top five team on my list. I mean, not the Dolphins, fuck the 49ers. <laughs> I agree. Um, and if this was me blankly looking at the quarterback situation and just flipping the names upside down and going, oh, yeah, Jimmy G had this game and Brock Purdy had two, went two for four, 56 yards. All right. Yep. 49ers are a top five team. Yeah. Um, for sure. But this defense is going to have to control the way. Um, and they showed this game that they could definitely do that. There was one point this 49ers team had a real ugly record. Yeah. And they have totally flipped it around and it's kind of mind fucked me a little bit. No, they're eight and four now. It's crazy, they're, huh? They're, they're eight and four now. They were at one point really ugly. It was like what, two and four or something like that. Um, and I think that sits in my head a little bit too much because they're playing great. They're uh, top two defense for sure, maybe top one. Um, but, yeah, this quarterback situation is going to be sticky for them. I don't know what to expect expect um, from Brock Purdy moving forward because the tape's out now. Um, all the That's teams are going to be watching yeah, yeah, and yeah. going to be diving deep into the Purdy tape. <sighs> And seeing what they're gonna see. Um, Before we move on, really quick. Yes. Sh- should the 49ers sign Baker Mayfield? So that was what exactly the transition I was gonna make, Trevor. Panthers announced today they released Baker Mayfield. He asked for it. They granted it. Kind of seemed like an easy situation there. Um, they had him like holding bags and shit in practice, so didn't seem like it was much no way baker mayfield yeah it, it was he was like holding bags and I, I saw some tape that was not pretty uh but this is a situation that's interesting for me because i've seen 49ers fans shout a lot of names out at quarterback a lot um rumor mill going around i saw divine sports tweet out and one of my friends say philip rivers um that would be awesome. i fucking started that uh that i fucking awesome. started that uh, As a I, joke, you, I text. I texted the only Forty Nine ers fan with, I know. I was with Braden, so I texted maybe, him. Maybe he stole that from you and didn't tell me. So I don't know, <laughs> Braden. That one's on you to still spill the beats. Um, but <laughs> this Baker Mayfield situation is weird to me because do you want to bring him in? This defense obviously likes Purdy. The players are, are rooting for their own guy. You know, you're 13 weeks deep with this roster and this team. Obviously, you're going to have to make a move. I know they went and got Josh Johnson, who's been on every team imaginable. Yeah, shout uh, out San Diego Fleet quarterback. Yep, shout out, shout out. Two, um, two game fucking 2-0 undefeated in the AF. That guy's a fucking legend. I saw they brought him to the practice squad. I don't know what the uh, what their, the rest of their quarterback situation looks um there's it's, it's, it's just him oh so makes sense what, Purdy and josh johnson yeah, now? yeah um i don't mind it i am i am one of the probably me and marty mush might be the only baker mayfield stands left in america um i still like him i i don't know why i like him maybe because i just i like his personality i think he's a a crazy fun guy but uh quarterback wise i still think he's got it like i i don't think you can be the heisman lead the browns to the fucking playoffs and then you're done like your career is over like i just don't i can't see that happening the browns were shitty and if you were shitty and you led the team to the playoffs like how does like it doesn't make sense to me but there i think how waivers works is the teams with the worst record get to, to claim him first correct Correct. So the 49ers have the 25th ranking on their. But I'm I'm trying to think of maybe other teams that may want him. I mean, personally, I think it would be fun to have on the Steelers, not to play, just to have, just to say we have Baker Mayfield on the Steelers. Like I think that would be fun. You guys have a deep quarterback room. There's no way that that makes. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. Way too deep. I mean. Um, but this is, a, it, this is an interesting situation, Trevor, because I do think that they are throwing darts at a wall right now going, 
I think we fucking have to make the move if he goes to free agency. Um, is there going to be teams that are snotty and snide and think that they would want to steal him away and claim him? Um, yes, I do think there are teams out there like the you Rams. Know, yeah, that's exactly what came to my mind. The Rams. The Rams are a team that have a terrible record whose quarterback has a neck injury who has been announced that he's done for the season. And I mean, you could just throw him in there for the rest of the year. I mean, other than that, no, not really. I don't see, I mean, maybe the Colts, if they really hate their guys that much. Um, yeah, I can't see that. Falcons I was thinking of a young guy in Desmond Ritter, correct? Yeah. I was thinking maybe the lions, but I don't, I don't think they well, would. It doesn't make sense because golf has kind of put them in a weird spot where they might bring him back next year. And I do think it's it might be like a team with a good record, like wants a backup. That that definitely could be a, a situation where like, um, the Bills, the Bills, the Raiders, the the Ravens, Ravens. That that's a really good one right there, Trevor. The Ravens, um. I mean, I know they like – I think they actually just claimed the guy, though, but um, I know they like their backup. Yeah, they uh, do but like there, there is a there is a situation where if he reaches for agency, the 49ers should probably pursue it because there's definitely an idea that there's a Nick Foles-esque story to be portrayed. Yeah, that would be sick. Or you like – Baker Mayfield down and out. I mean – at this point of his career, but Heisman Trophy winner, he gets drafted first overall, leads the Browns to their first playoffs in God knows how long. First playoff W versus an interdivision rival Steelers, then gets hurt the next year, sucks while tries to play with injury, gets traded, sucked while they gave him an opportunity with a dog shit team. I mean, this is a really good team. Um, did him and CMC vibe well? Because that is another question. Um, yeah, I know. If CMC goes, no, I didn't like him, then that team's probably going to not even not even blink twice. And maybe I'm just getting a complete different vibe off of him than like NFL has because they're around him. Maybe he's a complete dickhead and a douche. Like in the clubhouse, or they get in the locker room. Yeah, because we get the we get the side that you know, almost like the Johnny Man- Manziel fan. Like we we are fans of football and funny and outgoing. Uh, I like the competitiveness. In competitiveness, them too. you yeah. know, and that was one thing with Johnny Manziel. It was all of the things were brought to the table, and then they all fell off the cliff. Yeah, you know, because if you're not good at football. You're no longer funny. You're no longer like competitive, all of the above. Like, um, so Baker also has to ask the question, uh, ask himself the question, where are you at at football? Like, are you putting a hundred percent into this? Because some of those Panthers games didn't look like it. You know, are you a hundred percent? Is the shoulder a hundred percent? Is it, I mean, do you want to go to a team just to fuck them over? Like, yeah. You know, because if you're not, if you don't think of yourself as good right now, you're not going to do the 49ers any good. No. And I think that's a very unique situation and opportunity that came up. And if he wants to take the opportunity, if the 49ers give him one, I mean, I think that's a great fit for him. Or uh, I was even thinking, put him in Dallas with Dak. But, you know, this all seems funny, too, because you ask for a release the day knowing that the 49ers quarterback gets hurt. Like, are you trying to put yourself there? Do you, you know, like, is, is it, you know, are the 49ers going to be weirded out about you? You know, like, yeah. you think too high of yourself. Are you, do you think you're going to be a franchise guy there when they have two guys who are, are battling for franchise guys already. And if yeah. he ends up with the Nick Foles S season, like what the fuck do they do? Yep. You know, cause that 49ers defense and offense without, I mean, 
whether we like it or not, Jimmy G, Trey Lance, Brock Purdy are all middle of the pack quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, and they've been, they're eight and four with three different guys. It seems like the fucking 49ers do this every year, wasn't it? Like just last year, this shit happened or two years uh, ago. I think it was two years ago when they had uh, CJ Bethard and fucking, yeah. I mean, number th- whoever it, number three was. I think that was Bethard. I, I don't remember, the, but. Yeah, but had I this, saw had the same shit go down. I saw a funny stat. They're like, um, Jimmy G's stats are Hall of Fame quality, but when you look like put the name to his stats, you're like, oh, it's just Jimmy G. He's like he's fifty one and thirty one, fifty one and thirty one, or fifty one and twenty one as a starter. Two it's Super like Bowl win. appearances. It's like, the, it's like the win stacked up. His wins and like his. You know, it's going to stack up later in life. Like, why the fuck are we not talking about Jimmy G more? But when you watch him every day, you're like, well, that's why we don't fucking talk about him. I mean, it, you know, because it, it's nothing ever than it, like average. I mean, hey, he's a nothing wrong guy. with that. Nothing wrong with that. But um, I, th- I think that it's a win win for both sides. I mean, because I think Baker's going to be better than Brock. Um, down the line, I think this was a game that, like I said, fluke I, for the yeah. Dolphins. I just think you need him so you have options, just in case Purdy is truly Mr. Irrelevant, which can very well be the case because he went to a college that runs the ball, scores 20 points a game, and then comes to the NFL. Her injury, injury, part of the game happens, you get your shot. You you lead your team to a W. You're feeling like man of man of the world, but no one's seen one film. No one's seen you take one snap of film ever. Yeah, so, now they have. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's that's a situation that they're in. Um, but I do think Baker's the move here. That is, it's just, you know, Baker's a better quarterback than Josh Johnson. I, I don't have any problem with saying that, and I don't have a problem with saying that right now. Baker Mayfield's a better quarterback than Brock Purdy. And he could go out there and throw 210 and two touchdowns and they could win. Um, but it's just, what do they want to do? You know, his, are they going to yeah, check a guy his, who is Mr. Irrelevant, like you said, or you throw in Baker Mayfield after cut, like, you know, sign him and let Purdy play while make the Mayfield's understanding the playbook and learning. But Mayfield has to earn his way to yeah, start. You know, make Mayfield earn it. Um, but let Purdy lose it technically, yeah. basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, don't don't give Mayfield the job. Make no. Purdy lose it. Yeah, because that's that's the only way the 49ers are will ever accept Baker Mayfield is if they're like pushing for him. Like, hey, hey, we have a it's quarterback time. who's won games, who's won in the playoffs. You know, yeah. like that's that's the only way Baker fits in this team. But this is all if Jimmy G is truly out for the year. Yes. Because if he's coming back for playoffs, no need to sign him. I mean, maybe. You can salvage. You're, you're, I mean, yes. Yes, maybe. We, unless, we will you, unless you go literally 0-6, whatever, 0-5, whatever, how many games are left? 0-7. I mean, they play the 49er. I mean, they play the 49 They play the Bucks next week Um, in – um San Fran. So we'll see. The Bucks are still playing like shit. So um let's go. Let's move on because we spent enough on Baker and the 49ers. Um right. so that was our number eight team. Both of us agreeing to yeah. agree. Number nine. We might continue to agree, Trevor. Let's see. One, two, three, Jets. Giants. Oh the Giants in this spot. They didn't lose. I think the Jets played a better team and played better. I don't think the Jets played. I don't think the Jets played good. I mean, they drove down the field twice and just couldn't score. I mean, you have Mike White. Your players got to step up and make those catches. And, you know, like, I still, I don't know. We could agree to disagree because I still am not sold on the Giants. (laughs) Being 0 and 2 in their division uh, and all the shit that goes with it. I am just, I'm riding with the Jets right now. I like the Jets more than the Giants right now. 
Um, yeah, that, I, that's just where I'm at. All right. Well, um, I have the Giants ranked above. I think they won that game on Sunday. And yeah, the tie is Loki going to save them when it comes to playoffs. Um, but it's against the, their own division, against a team who has the same record, you know? So yeah, I really help them. Mm, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> I think that I think the rest of the season the, it will pan out what will be in line. I don't think it helps them or hurts them. I mean, helps them versus the Cowboys per se or other oh. teams for the wild card, I guess. I guess both teams could make wild card. No, I mean, that's they uh, can't. all three. All three could. No. Technically. Can't. Yeah, there's three wild card teams. I mean, if we don't think that, um, I mean, no, I think they're, I think they're both, I think they're both in right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, well, let me check the. They are, they are, they are, they are. As the Eagles both. lead it, Cowboys are one, Giants would be two, Jet, uh. Commies would be Seahawks, three, I guess. actually Seahawks, um, instead of commies, commies oh, are yeah. sniffing around, um, per the Manning cast. They do not like in the hunt. They said that is an old term, outdated term, been around for way too long. So now the new term per Manning cast is sniffing around. Oh, um, I like that. I like sniffing around. Um, my number nine is going to be the Giants. I like Saquon. I like Dave. Oh, you like Saquon still? I like Saquon. Saquon. Kind, of, kind of fallen off for me the last couple of weeks, and that's why I kind of booted it's... them down a little bit. His yards per carry has gone down tremendously. It looks a little tired to me. I mean, he is coming off an ACL. and Yes, all good points. All, all of the above. But I mean, off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I just don't know who they've been playing the last couple of weeks, but they could have just been playing good run defenses, which would put his yards per carry down. But I still like him. Right. They f- are always tight or close in games, which I like about them. They're, they're in one possession games, which can go really 50-50 if you have enough time. But this game that they just played, they had enough time. They had an extra fucking 15 minutes of time, and they still couldn't get a win. Um, Tough, but you know, I guess if you're trying to fight for the to get into playoffs, that's a tie. You'll take the tie. But Giants are my nine. Number ten for me is going to be the Jets, right behind them. Very interchangeable, but for my list and to argue, the Jets are going to be ten. Mm, don't like the Giants that well. My number ten teams, the Titans. I know they kind of got schooled this week. Um, they fell down my list for sure. But I still like them. They lead their division. They're going to be a playoff team every year. Um, And it depends on their matchup, who they play in the playoffs, if they're going to win. Because if they play a team that doesn't have a good run defense, they're going to win. If they play a team that has good run defense, they're probably going to lose. Um, And that's just how the Titans games go um, every year, it seems like. But I'm going to put the Titans there. I still think they're scary to me. I still think that they they're i mean it's the number 10 ranked team and a top 10 i think that's a good spot to put them because i still feel like they're question mark but they win games they're supposed to um and like this week they just lost a game that they were supposed to buy way more than they should have um but i'm still gonna say that i like the titans i think that Tannehill has been playing better except this game I know it's weird adding in a game that they only scored 10 and they all look like shit, but that's why they fell on my list. Um, Teams jumped ahead of them. Um, So Titans were 10? Titans 10. Don't like it, don't love it, but... uh, I think our 11 is going to be the same. 11 is the same? You just just hit a... uh, I think the 11 is going to be the same team. All right. Well, let's hear you say it. The Baltimore Ravens are my 11 team. 
you're correct, Trevor. We are sitting in the same. I didn't want to say it because I felt like I have them too fucking high. And I felt like you were going to yell at me. So I wanted you to say it. I think they're fairly rated at 11. They're not a top 10 team. Their record is good enough. Um, They're bozos, though, for real, Trevor. I don't know if you could say that about both the teams ahead of you in your division, but this is a bozo team. Their defense falls apart second half. Their quarterback, I mean, he got hurt, but has not been playing well, and he's trying to go get a contract, and it's it's kind of a big question mark for me because they should be killing teams um, with him. But honestly, at the same time, I think the Ravens have put him in this situation to fail because if you look at that offense, dude, they have a bunch of uglies out there. Like, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but yuck. I mean, yeah, just, I mean, Deshaun Watson is going to be out there. I mean, not not Deshaun well, Watson. You said uglies, dude, not our <laughs> words. <laughs> I was I, – that just threw my whole thing off. They have Deshaun Jackson. I don't know why I said Watson. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, they just signed. Completely different Deshaun. Out there. Yeah, same, same – No, 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 no <laughs> not the same. Same really division, different. same first name. My bad. I'm bad with names. I mean, I there's too much to remember in sports to be good at names. No. Yeah. Have you heard Dave Portnoy pronounce one name correctly ever? No. I don't care. I mean, I that's just what I'm saying. I'm bad at names. And um, well, you gotta talk for your face to show. Shout out Dave Portnoy. Shout out Dave Portnoy. Okay. Um, but yeah, Ravens. I feel like this is ready for the decline of the Ravens because of Deshaun out. I, or fuck. Jesus. I'm just all over the place now with Lamar out. At least I caught it and didn't just keep going. Um, with Lamar out. But yeah, I don't want to talk about the Ravens no more because I don't know anyone's name. Well, yeah, so the Ravens can't be labeled bozos because they were never not bozos they were always shitty i always knew that they were shitty um and they just sucks injuries a part of the game it i i hate i don't wish injuries upon anyone i wish everyone played but your quarterback gets injured you fall down my list to number 11 and this may be the highest you're ranked the rest of the year because your team is falling apart and i'm just giving you the benefit of a doubt for having a good overall record but we take a look at your team you got Devin Duvernay as your leading receiver other than actually he might be now because Mark Andrews has been playing around with injuries so Devin Duvernay is your number one sucks OBJ doesn't even want no part of you doesn't even want to go to Baltimore to visit nothing because you guys stink you're in a tough division you're gonna lose to a bunch of way better teams than you Okay, well, um, let's talk a little bit about the game if you're just going to shit on them. They barely beat the Broncos 10-9. to um, They overcome them at the very last second of the game, drive down the field, score tutty. Um, Broncos, Russ, you guys fucking stink, dude. This is so embarrassing. Russ, you are trash, dog. Russell has... Seven touchdowns this season. Seven passing touchdowns. Peyton Manning's first game with the Denver Broncos. In what year was it? 2015? 2013 maybe was his first year, actually, my bad. Seven touchdowns in his first game. Yeah, that's what uh We're the in, guy who... in through week fucking 13, Trevor. Yeah, this is... uh. I think Brock Purdy you could have more him to than to be the fucking MVP, Trevor. This is not a fucking Shinny Shinny's up, terrible Trevor. takes show. This is not this I is... want you to feel Russ's pain as well as Russ. Because no, this and I didn't I didn't bullshit because I did not pick him them. to win MVP. I said I knew a guy who picked him. I didn't pick him. Mm, check the tape. I didn't. Okay. I don't, know, I don't know what else to say. All right. Well, good thing we have tapes. 
Uh, but the Ravens beat the Broncos. Broncos scored uh, failed to score 18 points every game this season. They have not scored more than 18 points. Yeah, they suck. That is so goddamn embarrassing. They shouldn't have a fucking win, to be honest with you. Well, they do. They have three and, of them. And it's embarrassing that they have three of them. I knew this season was going to be a shit show for them when Geno Smith beat them on Monday night in Seattle. I just knew it. Yeah, that was the beginning of the end. Instantly. <laughs> Instantly beginning of the end. That was his best game he ever played. Um. All right, let's go to the next game. I got the Giants here, Trevor, at 12. Um, I'm still not sold on them. Um, I mean, you had the Giants in the Giants 12. You have the Giants so high, but you could put the commies that high. They're you playing can't. pretty well. You can't. Same recce. It don't matter. I'm just saying, if you're teams, looking at recce's power rankings, teams they beat are better than the commies. Okay. Same division. It's all the same. Man. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm playing around. I, the Giants are a respected 12 team for me. I'm not sold on them every given night. They do play in games, but I felt like that's the Giants every year as they've played in games. They're just on the right side of a couple this year. Um, I still am not sold on them. If they make the playoffs first round, goodbye. Um, you know, one week and you're done. I mean, if that's a successful season for you, then good job. But um, I just think that, um, the Giants have a lot of pieces to to retain, a lot of pieces to move on from, um, a lot of decisions to make this offseason. It, it's been a good first Brian Dayball season in impression for New York um, and f- the future. Um, but you got to make decisions like, is Daniel Jones the guy? Uh, you have no wide receiver, so it's been pretty good without them. Uh, are you re-signing Saquon? There's a million other running backs, probably cheaper than what he's going to ask for. They they got a lot of questions, but um, I'm going to put them at 12. They've been playing pretty well up to this point. I said I'm going to start to see them fall off. This tie was embarrassing because they had this game the entire way, but uh, I'm going to put them at 12. I don't remember what I had them at. I had them at 11, so they moved down because of the tie. My 12 team is Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks making their way into my week 13, top 13, squeezing their way in first week on the rankings for me. And Rams had a late touchdown. Geno drove down the field, scored a tutty to win the game. That was just vintage Geno Smith. And... (laughs) I just like the way he's playing right now and the Seahawks, honestly. I thought they'd be dead out of the water with without Russ and they proved me to be the exact opposite. So, good for them. I'm going to ride you out until the wheels fall off that bus and that wagon. So, Seahawks number 12. Um, Seahawks are 13 for me right there. Um, Very close. Um, Week 13, top 13 for me. Um, rounds out with the Seahawks. They're playing really well. They're fighting for playoffs right now, and that's something that I would never, ever have thought of. But, hey, this team, Geno Smith, you got a good pick from the Broncos next year. I don't know what they're going to do, what moves they're going to make, but this has been a great year, a fun year for the Seahawks fans because what could you have expected? You know, you traded a guy who's been the guy for a decade. And you go get a guy who hasn't been a guy for a decade. And he's became a guy. I know I've had some weird sayings this podcast, but I feel like this has been like a an outburst of emotions for me because we've had a great week of football. I did great in my picks and I'm I'm showing love. Um, but Gino like you said, has been playing great leading the Seahawks. Hopefully I would love to see them in the playoffs because anything fucking happens in the playoffs and they fight, they rally, they come back. This was a comeback W. I know it's where it's a bad team, but fuck it. It all counts in the end. Trevor, give me your 13. Let's round it off. 
and my week 13 top 13 pick 13 number lucky 13 the Tampa Bay Buccaneers squeezing into the 13th spot yes I know they are terrible and they play like shit but Tom Brady has three wins on the last possession of the game which is absolutely mind-blowing to me because that team is terrible I think they're dead out of the water and they stink. And then all of a sudden Tom Brady has a ball with less than a minute left and he turns into a superhuman. He turns into Tom Brady of the 24 to three versus the Falcons in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady. It is something I have rarely seen. And to be doing this at 46 years old gets a lot of respect out of me. A lot of respect. Bucks 13. I love it. Um, So are the Bucks um on my list right here of notes and such. I have the Bucks circled with a question mark in parentheses because um one, I wanted to see what they did tonight, and two, um they haven't been good all year. So, yes, like you said, three comeback wins for Tom. Um, that is just Tom Brady at his finest, pulling the trigger, um, coming up in the clutch. They still have a road a, a, in front of them. Long road. The Rocky it's Mountain. Fucking ugly, man. Watching the Bucks week in and week out. They play terrible. Um, they almost lost this game, but Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and the team showed up when they had to. They struggle versus the Saints, and I talked about that going into this week. But Lattimore wasn't there. Mike Evans didn't even have a game, though. That was just crazy with no Lattimore. Saints have their number, but the Bucks come up on top. Our lists are only separated by the Titans and the Bucks. So um pretty close list. Pretty, pretty close. Week 13. Uh last thing I wanted to mention before this podcast finished, Trevor, was Deshaun Watson was complete ass in his first game. I tried. First- my best to let everyone know <laughs> no one wanted to believe me nobody. nobody nobody wanted to believe that he wasn't gonna be good his first game back i had probably four people tell me they started him this week in fantasy yeah i was trying i was like dude don't don't start him right now he's not gonna be good he's he wasn't necessarily a superstar before so he's not just going to pop right in after not playing for two fucking years and then just be a superstar again. Like, okay, don't lie. He was pretty damn good when he f- stopped playing football. Well, don't turn into an R word. Yep. Don't turn into an R word. Um, And yeah, it, it was probably a mix of emotions for him. One, because it was back in playing Houston. Um, but I wish I fucking wish the Texans would have won. <laughs> I wish that Texan team's just bad. The Browns defense just completely destroyed that Texan team. Yeah, I know. I was looking at and I was like, Full scores. two pick six and a punt return for a touchdown, and they won by thirteen points. I was like, fuck. If only that that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man. If, if only. Two touchdowns and a punt return did not happen. Uh, you you would have won this game. <laughs> um, but yeah, Deshaun sucks. Um, and it's kind of good to see for the fans. Um, but I don't think that'll last much longer. Will the rest but, of this year. I mean, hey, who cares? It's some rounds. Um, but that's all I the the rest of my notes are done. We hit all my topics. Um Nothing wrong with being average, Trevor. Don't be an R word. Don't be Steelers. Love you guys. Nothing wrong with being average. Go Raiders.